Alrighty, welcome back to the Big Ski Family. I'm Chad. And I'm Janice. Hey there. And we are gonna answer two more of the questions that came through your marriage Q&A uh, questions. We love those questions, by the way. Keep them coming, very fun. Um, this one was around spending time in the Word. And the, I think the question was, do you guys spend time in the Word together or do you do it separately or both? And the answer is C, all of the above. Um, and I wanna be really clear. Both of us have individual relationships with the Lord, first and foremost. And it's the relationship with the Lord is our number one priority, I think, for both of us. Mm -hmm. I know Absolutely. that for a fact. Okay. Now, the way that we grow in our relationship with the Lord is very personal and very individual. And I think it's super important to acknowledge that because I struggled for many years not having a uh, exact relationship that Janice had with the Lord. I mean, explain this. Janice is someone who's an early morning riser by nature, by natural uh, habit. She's someone who is super focused and disciplined. These are her core strengths. She has incredibly high follow through. And so her structure is very systematic and very um, high consistency. She has decades full of journals that she completed every single day in her quiet times. And Not I'll be every single day, but virtually. I mean, a lot. way more days <laughs> hit than missed. I, on the other hand, am the exact opposite and you could just know that i mean i would just undo everything that she is i'm the exact opposite and so i would struggle with this almost guilt complex of man i'm not doing this right i'm not having the, the right amount of quiet time in the right way at the right time journaling doing everything writing prayers down and this and that and i tried to be like her in our early married life and i realized that my relationship with the lord is very personal and i grow in relationship with him in a different way now we both love God's Word and want to be in God's Word. And so Janice, again, explain a little bit of your quiet time in the morning because oh. it's so powerful. Absolutely. The, I love God's Word. I, When I was 16 years old, I was kind of apathetic in my relationship with the Lord and I just said, Lord, just give me a hunger and thirst for you. And I went to Psalms 119 and just started praying that, mm. Lord, please just give me a hunger for your Word because I just had no desire to get to know Him. And as I was consistent with that, he started to just put this burning and desire in me and my relationship would started to grow with him. And he really has answered that prayer and given me a love for his word. I can't get enough of it. I go to bed excited about getting, waking up in the morning. It's what makes me go to bed because I can't wait to get up and hear what the Lord has to share with me from his word mm -hmm. and to be with him. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, that relationship has really grown and it's been the secret weapon in my life yeah, absolutely. for everything. Absolutely, fuels her. For our relationship, for my relationship with my children, yeah. for ministry, yes. for everything. Janice is a full cup all the time because the joy of the Lord is her strength and she finds her, her source in him, her identity in him. She doesn't find it in me. I, I can't give it to her. The kids can't give it to her. Life and work can't give it to you. You're this full cup because she gets up and she spends time in relationship with him. And, it, you're, and again, you're very, like I said, you'll take a patches of scripture or a Bible study guide. You're personally walking through these verses. You're memorizing, you're meditating, you're studying. Um, journaling, you know, writing all these things oh, down in your books. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it works for. Her. For me, I'm a guy. I have to roll out of bed, immediately put on my running shoes, and go get outside. If I try to go sit at a desk after rolling out of bed, I'm just going to conk over, drool on myself, and get nothing done. And so, knowing who I am is so important to get in my running shoes. And I love praising and worshiping the Lord while I run, and praying while I run or while I walk. It keeps me very uh, engaged with him. And then I get to come back after I'm kind of warmed up and woken up and get to spend time in the word for me. So it's, it's I think, the approach. And I don't journal a ton. I, I just the, I, It slows my thinking down. It slows my praying down to sit there and think about what I'm writing. It kind of turns off my relationship with the Lord in a certain sense. Um, so I think it's so important that you understand how do you spend time with somebody? How do you build relationship with somebody? It's how does my heart know him and, and be known by him and how am I connected? This is not a ritual, this is not religion, this is not no. formulaic. This is how do you live and breathe with a living God? And, and so take it as your personal challenge to find the way that you connect yeah. with the Lord, right? That's you. Because again, like I said, there's a lot of places they'll teach you, oh, this is how a quiet time looks or this, and that's fine. And your personality and skill set may really grab onto that. Some of you may not. 
but it's personal and real. Second thing is, I know there's a lot of couples devotionals. A lot of people think, well, guy, they have a good marriage. They must sit down every day and walk through a couples devotional, sip tea and coffee together, and then hold hands and pray for an hour. We don't often get that. We're on on similar tracks, but we're going different places. Tomorrow I get up in the morning, I go to Toronto on a plane, and the Lord goes with me, and He fuels me, and she gets up, and she's gonna be running our home and pouring into our children, and this is so personal and so real. And so we have our individual relationships with the Lord, and then Janice will share a verse, she'll text me, hey, I just read this, and I thought of you today, and, um, and I'm praying this for you today, or how can we pray, and we pray, we do pray together. We well, love we to pray, pray together. On dates. Every night we before pray, we go to bed, we always pray with each other. And whenever there's a challenge or a test or yes. a, or an opportunity to praise, yeah. we're coming together to pray, and we love praying together. And I think praying together as a couple is so important. But at the same time, we're not the couple's devotional, you know, poster child for doing it that way. We just really haven't. That being said, family Bible times, mm -hmm. and we, there's two ways we do this, and it's so flexible in our home. Again, guys, it's about our hearts. It's about our children's hearts, pointing to the Lord. It cannot be formulaic. If we start making it ritualistic and rules and whatever, and again, some of your accountants, man, your engineers, you're gonna line it up and you're gonna do it mm -hmm. just the way you should. It'll be in the spreadsheet and you'll know where you're covering which passage and what's gonna be studying on Thursday two weeks from now, and that's fine. Be you in your relationship with the Lord and whatever, but realize it's a hard thing. When I'm at home in the mornings and I'm around to do breakfast, we're gonna open the scripture after breakfast every morning as much as possible there's mornings where you're busy and you're bolting for a deadline but every morning where we have a moment and it could be 10 minutes it could be 20 minutes it could be a half hour often it's 10 15 minutes reading through a proverb taking a, a chapter out of colossians taking a psalms and just read a psalm and reading through it asking questions of the children we do the same with proverbs where i'll start to read and they fill in the blank you know Blessed is the man, that bull, you know, or you could, you know, that Psalms, but let them fill it in. And Anyways. Then, and then when you're gone. You take over. And I take over. And so in the morning, important. I share with the kids. I'm very transparent and real with them about what the Lord's teaching me. And, Absolutely. you know, give Pointing them a word the of encouragement, but just trying to bring some fresh manna to them every day, yes. the daily bread. Yes. And, um, and sometimes I have them. I want you to share what is the Lord speaking to you? How, right. What is he sharing with you? Or I'll assign somebody tomorrow, I'd like you to lead the devotion. That's right. So we do that in the morning and then we also do it in the evening. In the evening, it's a little when different. When he's home. You know, when we're home, we'll do a family Bible time. And again, I would say with the hectic pace of life, we it's been a little less now that the children are younger, older, older now than when we were younger and we had a little more control of schedules and coming and going. But that being said, the ability to just sit around a family room around the dinner table often we go in the family room and sing a few songs you know if the kids have instruments they'll jump in and they'll start playing kelsey will jump on a piano be able to pick up a guitar carolina guitar whatever and just start singing some songs together praise and worship in the lord maybe ask a couple of the kids to sing a special number you know if they've been practicing something or janice will do a song that she's working on um, and again, and then we just will open the scripture. And when we do that, we typically have our Bibles out. The kids will go around and each one of them will read a verse or we'll say each person read two verses and we'll read around the circle and then we discuss it and we just ask simple questions. And what do you think about this? What, what, do you, what does that mean to you? What do you think the Lord is saying here? And, and it convicts us, it challenges us, it encourages us, it inspires us and it unites us as a family. And then we pray together. And, and then we do pray. Sometimes if it's a late evening, one person will just pray, and then other times we'll say, hey, anybody yes. who wants to pray, who That's are people right. we need to be praying for, and it's just so precious to see your little ones just, you know, grow in their confidence of just being able to pray out loud in front of other people and what they pray for, it's so <laughs> sweet. And then after that, we just have a good time, like just joking around and visiting and whatever. So, so it's good. just one of my favorite times of the day. So good. Is getting together at night. And guys, if there's a few things I would tell you as parents, if you're young parents, is first of all, give yourself a ton of grace here. This yes. is not a rule keeping formulaic. Oh, we got to do this. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let his word delight you. Delight in your times together. Make it a time of refreshing. Make it a time of joy. Make it a time of fellowship, of listening, of asking your children questions, of allowing them to participate. It's not a burden on a dad to be like, oh, I've got to have my act together. I got to be a Bible teacher. I got to know this. Or it's not a burden on a mama for these things. It's just literally gathering around and sharing what you're learning, where you're growing. 
If you're convicted of something in your own Bible time, like Jenny said, share it. Hey, the Lord showed me this. You know, they need to see us being challenged and chastened and loved by the Lord and His Word. They need to see us being blessed and excited about the things that we're learning. And when it becomes real and His, His Spirit is speaking to us through His Word and we're sharing that, there's nothing sweeter than that. No. And that's, that's, I think, where faith gets transferred to our children. It's in the, the, it's in the everyday moments of pointing our, our lives at the Lord and His Word and, and looking at Him through the lens of His Scripture and His, and His it, it's all of it, but it's really Deuteronomy us. six. It is when you sit down, when you rise up, when, when you, you walk go to along sleep. the way. Yes. That's it. It's just that's all it is. Real. It's yeah. Just so that's that's our uh, a Q and A today around our relationship with the Lord, and how it works, and again, it's a it's good. Be aware that how your heart connects with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is what matters, and that you're walking in a real, genuine relationship with Him and you aren't falling prey, because I see so many fall for a system, or for a man's method, or for, oh, hey, this Bible teacher said do this, this, and this, or this workbook said that. Guys, we're following the, the, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and be able to walk in His ways, and His Word is a delight, and, uh, and just it's show precious. Up. Yeah. 90% of it is just showing up. I never know what's gonna happen. That's what? right what the Lord's gonna bring to me that's just that's gonna right. be highlighted on the page. I'm gonna go, sure. oh, you're totally speaking to me right now. For sure. Just open the word and start yes. reading it. That's so good. And just watch how he's faithful to you. And that's be right. be sensitive to him speaking. Just say, Lord, please speak to me. And so good. Show me your word. I'm gonna so. close out with an awesome verse that I love. Yes. It goes, it's Jude 24 and 25. It says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, oh, glory. Be glory and majesty, majesty. Dominion, dominion and power, power both, both now and, and forever. forever, amen. Anyways, God bless you guys, keep on, it's so worth it.